Manraj joining us live, so thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, I think I've already spoken to a lot of you before. Uh, my name's Eben. I'm the Senior Partner Success Associate, so I kind of lead on uh, partner success at Smileback. Uh, I also manage the support team for the kind of incoming support as well. And this webinar is aimed, you know, specifically at our Autotask partners. Uh, and the reason for that is that you may already know that at the end of last year, we made quite a significant upgrade to our integration with Autotask. Uh, and just for some background on that, when we first created Smileback for Autotask, we actually did it in a very technically simple way um, in really the only way that was available to us at the time. And what that meant was you could use Smileback for the CSAT surveys. So doing the surveys, to the ticket contact each time you resolve the ticket. And the way that worked is that in that ticket were some long, long URLs uh, embedded from your email template where Smileback or rather Autotask would fill the long tail of that URL with information from the ticket and then Smileback would read that and say, you know, use that to know who's the contact, uh, who's the company and so on. Uh, that was kind of simple to get going. Um, but quite limited. It meant that basically our Autotask partners didn't have access to the full Smileback experience that was available uh, on ConnectWise Manage or Zendesk and, and other, other PSAs. The good thing is, is that last year Autotask um, made some very significant upgrades to their API, which basically meant we could then create a proper API connection, a modern REST API connection between Smileback and Autotask. Uh, and that is exactly the kind of technology that we use with ConnectWise Manage and Zendesk and the other PSAs. So one thing just to show you in the slides here then is if you still see this orange message at the top of your screen, either that means you have only just created your Smileback account. Um, and if you haven't just create your Smileback account in the last kind of day or so and haven't finished setting it up, it means that you haven't yet taken advantage of this upgrade. You haven't connected your Smileback um, account to Autotask through the API. Uh, and I really, really encourage you to do that. As I'm going to talk about, there are many new benefits that will be open to you. It's also just a lot more robust. For example, the old way we're doing it, uh, unfortunately can be quite um, vulnerable to just not being able to pull the information properly and there's not really any way to get it back. The good thing about having the API is you can always query the information from the original ticket. So if something happens, you know, us task isn't quite working, Smileback isn't quite working that day, um, you know, your firewall is being weird, um, and your tickets, your reviews are coming in without the ticket details, you can go back and repair them later uh, with this. So it's just a lot more robust basically, as well as, as well as opening up a lot more features and a lot more capability. So I'm gonna just talk a little bit about how to do that. We have full instructions uh, in our help center and I'll put that in chat in a second. Uh, we have a, a video guide, uh, so, don't worry about kind of memorizing this all now. And as I say, if you're watching the recording of this, uh, it will be linked in the description below the video. So if we go over to our demo Smileback account, this is one that's already been set up. So as you can see, we don't have that orange warning message at the top. But what it has here is this Autotask PSA option underneath the user menu in the top right of the screen. And I'll just make that a little bit bigger. Uh, so if you have been using Autotask in the past, you will, this page was always there, but there basically wasn't really any information on it. There wasn't any uh, thing to show you here. Now you can see we have a field for a key and a secret. Don't mind what's filled in there. It's just from my uh, password uh, vault. Uh, and you can see this is already connected. But you get the idea that this is a page where you can enter API keys. and. If you set up any other integration to, small, uh, to Autotask before, you've probably done something very similar to what I'm about to show you. So inside Autotask itself, in the main menu that's in the top left there, when you go down to admin, uh, you can then see there's this extensions and integrations option. 
and then in here you can then see other extensions and tools uh, and there's a few more options but if you click on integration sensor this is where you can find smileback so we've already set it up I, I, as you can see it's the only one we've set up in the sandbox it's right at the top uh, in your case if you haven't set it up yet you can just do you know control f or just scroll down um, so you know we are in there we are an official integration partner with you know Autotask. we set this up you know with their help we talk to people at Datto, um, so this is all kind of done with their cooperation. Um, but basically, you come here, and then with this menu here, you can then first edit it to basically associate this member with certain types of tickets and give it a security role. Um, and then when you've done that, you can add an API user. And as you do that, that's where you can generate these uh, username key and the, uh, the secret password, which you then put into Smileback. So for the people who are watching right now, I'm just going to grab my help center link, um, which will give you the full instructions on how to do this. And if you're watching along to the recording, uh, this will be available to you either in the description or linked to somewhere else. So one second while I just bring up the chat menu. There we go. Um, and then once you've done that, you will need to redo the survey snippet. So if you are a current partner who's watching this, you've already been using uh, Autotask, you will have already done this at least once. You go into the tools menu and click on survey. You then create the snippet as we call it. Uh, which is a simple, actually now much simpler piece of HTML code, uh, which basically you put into the email template inside of Autotask. And that's what makes those famous three faces appear, you know, inside of the email. So the people responding can just click inside the email to, you know, rate the ticket. Um, Again, this is something we have full instructions on and I'll share that with everyone in a second. Just to refresh you very quickly without going through the whole thing, it, it's managed through the workflow option. So again, you go to the admin section, uh, you go to the workflow rules, and then you know, Autotask already has um, you know, ways of basically sending particular email templates when a ticket's closed. Uh, as you can see, we actually have a CSAT survey one at the top of our screen. Uh, so just to emphasize one more time, if you haven't done this upgrade yet, once you've made that API connection, you will need to create a new survey snippet uh, and come and replace the old one in Autotask. Uh, and then once you've done that, then you are good to go. So it's not too big a job. It's, uh, there's a few different menus to click around in Autotask, but you know, it's like 10 minutes, um, you know, 20 minutes if you really take your time with it, but you should be done. And this is, you know, once you've done it, it's done. You don't need to kind of worry about this again. Uh, it'll, and if you do need to say, update your keys in the future, it'll be very simple to do that. So I'm just gonna share the instructions on adding that snippet to the people who are watching live uh, and it'll be linked in the recording. Okay, so let's, uh, move away then from the kind of itty bitty technical stuff uh, and instead talk about the main thing which is just to talk about what can you now do you know if you take advantage of this upgrade well one thing you'll you may have noticed if you do this is that this whole new section of MPS options appear uh, there in the left hand menu of Smileback and MPS stands for net promoter score so net promoter score survey is another type of survey. You get a whole second type of survey uh, in Smileback for the same price. Um, Net Promoter Score is a great way of gauging overall customer satisfaction and customer loyalty. So the crucial distinction between it and the CSAT survey is where CSAT, as you probably know, um, you, you run it every ticket. You know, you, you close a ticket, it goes out, and you ask the contact to rate that particular ticket, how did we do? MPS, on the other hand, you send on a scheduled basis. 
So you could do a kind of a one time, but offering you send it on a repeating basis, like once a quarter or once every six months. And what you're asking then is not to rate one specific interaction, but instead for the customer to tell you about their overall experience. And that way it's a great compliment. You get the constant day-to-day -day check of how are we doing on our tickets with CSAT and with MPS, you prompt people to think about, you know, maybe price, the development of your service and your offerings, you know, do they still think it's a good fit for them or not, or anything else uh, that's on their mind. And the reason that uh, the reason that we introduced this is basically the people are asking for, you know, it's, it's becoming a kind of, a, it's already an industry standard in many industries. Um, and it's certainly becoming more and more popular in the managed services and, you know, related kind of technology providers. Uh, we use ourselves, uh, we're big advocates of using it. And the way that we manage it in Smile back then is we have these things called campaigns. Now a campaign is just an MPS survey that's gonna go to a particular group of contacts on a particular schedule. And you might start off with just one campaign and you're gonna send the survey, you know, maybe you're just gonna send it once uh, to get a feel for it and get a kind of baseline for all your contacts. But often what people do and what we do ourselves at Smileback is we have more than one campaign. So we basically segment it. You know, we send it to new users uh, once a month. So people get it within their first few weeks of using Smileback. Uh, most people then get it on a quarterly basis. And then we also have a group of kind of important um, decision makers who don't necessarily log into Smileback itself very often, but we still want to know what they think. So we send it to them every six months. So what you can do then is you can create a campaign. And as I say, you could send it once or you can send it on a repeating basis. And I'll go for a quarterly one here. And we'll be able to see on this next page, there's a few different customization options. I'm not gonna go into kind of every single detail of how this is set up, but I will share a resource uh, in a few minutes that will, will do that. Uh, but basically something to know about this is this is gonna be sent out by Smileback uh, ourselves from our own email server. However, there is a way for you to set up uh, so it can come from your email domain. And we, we strongly recommend that you do that. Uh, using this setup domain thing here. Um, something to know about that is that means basically putting some records in your, your DNS settings. So you want to do that a little bit in advance of when the survey is going to go because it can take it can take some time for that to kind of sync up and, and become successful. Um, and we allow you to customize this email in various ways. Uh, as you can see, there are some personalization options. You can even add the customer name to the subject line. And you can see then at the bottom, uh, this is the main, the kind of typical standard MPS question. How likely are you to recommend uh, the company, in this case, our test company, Methouse Group, to a friend or colleague? You can change it a little bit uh, and you can go back to the standard one. I definitely recommend leaving on standard. The good thing about that is it is an industry standard. It's easy. People will may already be familiar with it and uh, it makes a good benchmarking. But if let's say you're doing a, a one-off survey for like a particular project, you might want to mention that specifically in the wording, or maybe you're going to have different campaigns that relate to slightly different lines of the business uh, or, you know, subsidiaries of the business. And you, you want to uh, capture that detail here. And then the way the survey works, it's an email and the survey is embedded right there in email. So just like you already do, all you know, people will see the email, all they have to do is click and they have already registered their kind of main rating. The difference is, is that with MPS, obviously the question that we've already covered, and then it's rated on this zero to 10 scale. The idea with MPS is that people who click nine or 10 are classed as promoters. They're basically the greens, the positives. They're the people who are really happy. In fact, they're so happy they say they would recommend other people. And that's kind of intentionally quite a high bar to clear. So the idea of MPS is not just, are we doing good? It's like, are people actually wanting to like kind of sing our praises or are they, you know, somewhere in the middle or are they actually not keen to recommend us? In which case, uh, you know, they, there's potentially a problem. So the idea is then you can start to tailor your responses. And this is something we have resources on as well to, you know, 
quickly intervene with people who aren't happy, make sure there's uh, any risk of them leaving is headed off. People who are in the middle finding out, you know, why are they teetering in the middle? What kind of changes can we make to get them happy? And then the people who are happy, you know, how can we uh, make the best use of that? You know, can we turn those people into promoters in the sense of actually encouraging them to refer people? You know, can we get them involved in our marketing efforts? And Smartback has options for that. Uh, and I can see I've got a couple of uh, questions uh, coming in. I'll address those just um, in a little bit once I get to the end of this NPS section. So um, yeah, just bear with me. Um, yeah, and then the comment page works much the same. So I'll skip over that for now, but this will all be detailed in the, the links I'm gonna share. The really important next part that I want to get to is how do you actually get people into the survey? You know, how do you choose the audience you're going to send it to? So first you should basically decide before you start, you know, kind of saying up and smile back, who do we want to reach and why do we want to reach them? And a really common thing to do would be to uh, kind of get a few key contacts at each, uh, each company, each client, you know, maybe that's one, two, three people. Who are the people who are the sort of holders of the relationship between your business and their business? Those are, I would say, priority number one. Um, so for getting the MPS survey to, and then any, any people who might be above them who you don't interact with as much, but hold the purse strings, you know, make final decisions on contracts. Again, very important. Now you can get them into your Smileback survey, uh, Smileback campaign by one of two ways. You can either upload them directly from a CSV file, but the one that we think is really neat is to import them using the API so this is why it's really crucial to do that upgrade uh, using the API connection with Autotask. You can this way import them directly from Autotask into Smileback each time the survey runs. So let's say you select, uh, you know, we can choose these kind of C suites. And if you can't see this in the video, I'm choosing uh, contact titles like COO, CEO, etc. cetera. Um, you know, you can set up a filter and say, give me all the contacts who match those titles, or maybe even more directly, just give me everyone who's flagged as a primary contact in Autotask. And then what Smileback can do is it can import the individuals who match that flag or match that other filter that you chose. And if you're running this on a repeating basis, so every three months, every six months, each time it's gonna run, it will do a fresh import that matches the filters you set up. So if you've added new primary contacts because you know the staff and your clients have changed or you've added new clients, those changes will be reflected. Whereas if you do the CSV upload, um, you can change the CSV, but you'd need to remember each time. Unless you change the CSV, Smileback will keep sending to exactly the same list. And I'll just very quickly go over the results and how they come in. Basically, as people get those surveys uh, and click on them, it comes in one by one. And you know, if you've used Smileback at all, if you ever look at your CSAT reviews, you know, you'll be familiar. Basically, each review comes in on its own line and it has the relevant details. Uh, you know, you'll notice that because this isn't tied to particular tickets, you don't have uh, ticket numbers, you know, ticket titles, you just have the contact, you know, and the company that they work for. Uh, you can, of course, filter those down to, for example, show people based on their response or their company uh, or the time and any combination thereof. And then at the top of the page, you have the key metrics. So the overall NPS score, the overall number of responses and the response rate. So I'll just quickly share the guide for setting up an MPS campaign uh, in the chat. And I will, of course, uh, share that in the recording as well. So I'm just going to read some of the questions out so that I can answer them. Okay, there's a quite detailed one about uh, Autotask workflows. I'll follow up with that one um, directly. If you're the person who's 
writing in as the autonomous, uh, sorry, not autonomous, anonymous attendee. If you could send me a, a direct message here in the Zoom chat or just send me an email at help at smileback.com and put those same details in there. Uh, I can look at that after the, after the webinar. Um, okay, how does a user retake a survey? So when someone has clicked a link, be that a number in the MPS uh, survey or a face in the CSAT survey, there is a short time window where they can change that. They can either go to the email and click on a different option there, or if they're on the comment page, there is actually the possibility to change. So if I just quickly show you the, um, if I quickly show you the preview in here, uh, you can see with next to the green face that there are some arrows. So they can actually click there and it's the same with MPS, they can change their score. There, like I say, it is only a short window because at a certain point we do need to act upon that, basically run automation, save it, you know, as a, as a kind of a definite response. Um, so if they want to change it later, like let's say you speak to them, CSAT, you can actually edit it directly if you have the highest level of commissions. MPS, you can actually resend someone um, the same survey. So if they just haven't answered yet, you know, maybe you speak to them and say, oh, I never saw it, you can resend it to them, or you could delete it uh, and then resend it. So if I go over to the MPS campaigns uh, and we look at one of our existing campaigns, you'll see that we've got different contacts here. And this is basically saying that, you know, this person, Brent, he already replied to the most recent survey. Uh, this person, Dan, hasn't, or there isn't a, a survey result for him. So you can actually manually resend the survey to that person. So uh, yeah, for the person who's asking about, um, can clients redo a survey? I hope that answers that question. Oh, okay. I see it's from Douglas. So yeah, I can connect with you afterwards about the workflows. Um, yeah, and there's a question about one of our marketing features. Are we, do we have any plans to integrate into other websites? Um, I will check. I know that we chose Google because that was by far and away the one that people were most interested in. So we had got several requests. Uh, we'd also been thinking ourselves of adding uh, a way of, of encouraging reviews into another site and Google was the clear winner at the time. Um, but I can definitely look and we can publish on our public roadmap, uh, which I will share at the end of the webinar uh, if we have plans to do that. Okay. Uh, Manraj is asking, we use BrightGage for a managed service point. Can we input the MPS results per customer? So right now you can't get MPS in BrightGage, but we are working with the BrightGage team to uh, sort that out. So you might know um, Smileback is now part of ConnectWise, BrightGage also part of ConnectWise. So that's really helped in that we are all under the same umbrella now. So I don't have a firm uh, answer in terms of the time, but I do, uh, we definitely will. Uh, hopefully sometime later this year, and you'll be able to get your MPS and your CSAT next to each other. Uh, but that actually does bring me on to my next thing I want to mention, which is another recent improvement, one we've actually done since the, the Autesk upgrade, is we have vastly improved the reporting options in Smileback. And you actually can now create reports that include CSAT and MPS in the same report. So let's say you're making a report for, for your clients that you're going to use for your quarterly or, or the business reviews, you can now bring together uh, their CSAT results and their MPS results. So if you haven't done already, please check out the reporting tab. And this was actually something we covered in uh, our last webinar. So if you are watching this uh, back and you're on the content hub or, or you're on our YouTube channel, um, I will make sure this is the kind of next video after the reporting one. Great. Um, so then the next and really the final main change uh, main new thing that you have access to, thanks to this upgrade, is automation. So what you will have had before with, with Autotask was the ability to send email alerts. That's still there, of course. But now that we have a two-way you know, API integration with Autotask, we can do a lot more with automations. So if we go ahead and click on the CSAT rule here, 
you'll see that we have the classic send an email action on the right hand side there, but we now have a few more and they actually relate to updating Autotask itself. So if you want to you know, keep your Smileback reviews back in Autotask, for example, you want to build a workflow around checking and responding inside Autotask because you know, that's where you're already working on the ticket, you can do that. You can have the review details added as a note to the ticket, um, but you can go further than just adding a note. And I'm sorry about these sirens. I'll just pause for a second. Okay. You can actually update the tickets themselves. So for example, you can reopen tickets. Uh, let's say when you get a bad review, you know, move that ticket from close back to open because you're going to, you know, you need to work more with that client. Um, you can also change it to some other category if you don't want to just do the simple reopen. Let's say you might have some kind of escalation category. Um, and you could also just create a new ticket. So if you prefer to leave the old ticket closed, but create a new ticket for the follow up and the kind of remediation, you can do that. Uh, and if you haven't seen this before, um, you know, there are various options on the left hand here. So you can put conditions, for example, you know, I mentioned running it if it wasn't a good result, or if you want to have different rules that are specific to particular clients or, or particular agents, let's say, you know, if it relates to this group of people, then we want to do one thing, that group of people, another thing, you know, the, it's all in them. It's up to you, basically. Um, and you can now also do NPS automations. These are very similar. Basically, you can create an email alert, you know, let me know when certain kinds of reviews come in. Uh, for example, if people give marketing permission, happy people give marketing permission, maybe you want to send an email address to your marketing person. Um, and yeah, so that's Autotask automations. So let me just drop the link for that in.